Hello everyone. Uh, this next video comes from a donation from Luis Carlos Odonez. Uh, first with the disclaimer, nothing meant for legal purposes, intended for anything illegal. It's history, it's knowledge, information, experience, all like that. And uh, his question was, have you seen a breeding produce the exact same dog from six to ten generations back? And it's a good question, and it comes up every now and again. The general consensus is that uh, the influence from a dog or dogs in a present-day individual uh, can be from approximately eight generations back. And that's where you hear the term throwback or you see dogs, they look like dogs of the past, you know. And since the pit bull has been bred for, you know, such a long time, sometimes we see pictures of dogs from the past and they look like our dogs in the present. Right? And uh, it could be from same particular bloodlines. It could be a mix from uh, different bloodlines. And it could be color patterns, could be structure, length, chest, head, muzzle, all these different things that can pop up. But uh, if you're speaking of a family of dogs, do those traits come forward when you see breedings? Meaning, uh, you know, within a litter, you might have one dog or two dogs that look exactly like its ancestor. Yes, that can happen. Uh, the best result would be not only does the <coughs> dog look like its ancestors and built like its ancestor or ancestors, but the traits it uh, retains are the same also. That could be anything athletic, could be temperament, could be behavior, along with that color pattern and structure or that particular color. And it could be, <coughs> cover the, all different kinds of, uh, you know, there's such a mix, such a diversity, so to speak, of uh, the dogs in the background of a particular individual that it just jumps right out at you. It's very noticeable when you see a dog that uh, looks and acts like an ancestor from several generations back, right? I'll give an example like this. A uh, new guide, heavily inbred bully sun dogs. Most of them were black, had the short and squatty look like a lot of them do. Coming from, you know, the stomper, midnight cowboy type of stuff. The, you know, the uh, uh, long baby, long toughy, satchmo, that kind of stuff. And this particular breeder bred them for 25 years straight like that. They were heavily, heavily inbred. But, and I'm not sure what the term is called. But every four or five generations, because uh, one of the litter mates to... Long's Baby, Long's Tuffy, Satch and Satchmo Bully and all that was a dog named Hunter Red. And he was built like them, looked like them, structure-wise, same head and everything, except he was red. His litter mates were all brindle, as far as I know. His Their sire was brindle. And, uh, you know, the even the brindle ran kind of a spectrum. You had light brindle, darker brindle, that regular brindle that we see, even black brindle. You know, Long's baby was that black brindle. Uh, Satch and Satchmo Bully, one was darker brindle, one was a light brindle. That, that you see kind of a, that grayish brindle color, right? So within these breedings over this period of time of inbreeding, one dog every four or five generations would come out with that red color, right? Amongst all these black dogs and that, that this guy produced, most of them were black, you know, like a lot of the Bully Sun Eli dogs are. Uh, but every 
four or five generations, he'd get one that was red that looked like a throwback to that hunter's uh, hunter red dog, right? He's called Hunter Red, or he's called Mexico's Hunter Red, because he was uh, sold to Mexico. He was matched in Mexico. In fact, him and either Satchmo Bully or Satchmo were matched on the same card in Mexico. And on that same card was a very famous female named Pirata, the Hinojosa Brothers Pirata. Uh, if I'm correct, she beat a male on that card. A very good bitch and uh, Satch or Satchmo Bully lost game and Hunter Red won game and those were rough dogs you know it kind of paired up with the Bully Sun dogs because uh, not only were these dogs known for their gameness they were known for being rough stifle fighters like that like the Bully Sun stuff chest shoulder like that just rough dogs just short and squatty on that uh, as far as structure goes so in his breedings, he would get that, you know, and the way he looked at it was that was the outcross within his heavily, you know, black Eli dogs, if you want to put it that way. And he would use it, use that particular dog when they came up as kind of a cross outcross within his inbreedings, if you understand my drift, right? So yes, a dog can come out that doesn't look like the litter mates may not look like the parents or the grandparents but it looks like a dog and uh from from several generations back and like i said the best scenario is not only does that dog look like it not only does he have the color patterns of that dog or that particular dogs but he also carries those traits and they could be the traits of athleticism, the traits of hard bite, the traits of gameness, the traits of of uh, a particular style, you know. So that's what people kind of mean when they say it's a throwback, you know. And, uh, you know, for me, it, it wouldn't be just looking at the dog. Well, he looks like that. He's built like that. He's, he's marked like that. Has the same colors. But it's more important that he carries those traits in the same way that, that when you make your breedings moving forward, you want to capture certain traits of your dogs, regardless of what they look like, regardless of how they built, you know, uh, and regardless of their cutter color patterns, you want them to perform a certain way, have a certain type of athleticism to them. Right. A lot of times that structure, uh, is what uh, the, the structure itself is what aids in that dog having a particular style. For example, those short, squatty, bully sun dogs are rough, strong, fast, intense. Bolo, bolio dogs, you know, more leg under them on the thinner side, more of a pointy muzzle than a short muzzle uh, that a lot of the Eli dogs have or even the slope to their muscle that muzzle that the Eli dogs have or Bolios have more of a more of a not pointy but more not to a point but more pointy more longer and with the full stop you know like that not the slope to their head and you know they have a lot of them have the half drop ears not the not the hound dog ears like some of the bully sun dogs have so that that the the structure a lot of times dictates the style or it, it they use they use their structure to to the advantage of how they move how they perform you know good balance versus you know uh, a powerhouse something like that you know deep chest like a lot of the dibo dogs have a short muzzle deep chest thin waist you know and that thin waist allows them to maneuver. It allows them to reach around and get a dog out of their stifle, for example. Right? So, these dogs... Now, now can you breed for it? I don't know if you can... You know... Uh, in the sense that, you know... You, you're trying to breed for that uh, throwback look and style and all that. You know, for me, it just, it pops up, right? 
but what you can breed for is a particular body structure style like that and you keep that going generations after generations let's say you had we'll just take it for granted that red boy is a kobe dog right so we know that kobe dogs in the past had a lot of white had patches on them had you know uh black and white and brindle and white you know like that thick bone good leg under them you know uh almost you know a picture perfect look of what a bulldog should look like right whether you're talking about kobe's tig or you know pincher or 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 uh uh what's his name uh kager or bull uh you know rifle or dime like that you know it's kind of like when you see a kobe dog you, you can tell it's a kobe dog so let's say within your red boy breedings however you bred them you inbred it more you outcross it or line bred it and whatever and you get a dog that looks like them old timey kobe dogs right and and for me the kobe dogs were they're kind of like a Heinzel dog, you know, if you'd seen, I didn't see a lot of Kobe dogs, you know, I saw a few, I saw one win in an hour 50, made several scratches, he was brindle with a little white on him, mostly brindle, nice head on him, you know, if you look at some of the Fonseca dogs that, that have Kobe in them, just good looking dogs, you know, well built, deep chest, thick bone like that, right, and for me, like I said, the Heinzel and the Kobe, they were they were kind of that all-around type, you know. Not one particular style, you know. It wouldn't be like a Chinaman dog. You see them going to the stifle or fighting foul like that. Not that they didn't do other things. They did, you know, or a Bolio dog, you know, fight smart, go to the head, and then fight rough like that, you know. The Kobe dogs were kind of, you know, all around just like the Heinzel dogs. They'd fight rough. They were smart. They could get on the muzzle. They'd go to the stifle. they fight the chest. they swap it out. they use good defense while they're on the offense, you know. I think that's what made them popular. When you see them, it's like, you know, these dogs know how to fight. They know what they're doing, you know, rather than a particular specialist or, or like the white dogs were just, you know, a straight white dog, mostly tight bred, you know. They're patient and they're rough like that. You know, but they they don't move around a lot. They're not fancy moves. They're not they're not uh, you know, some of them takes them a while to get going. You know, like that. And and uh, uh, the Kobe kind of they come out right away doing their thing. You know, kind of like that. You know, and that's that's the kind of dog I like that that kind of versatile, not dumb but rough. You know, or rough but not dumb, and strong and fast like that. You know. They, they kind of, they can, they can uh, kind of deal with any particular style that's against them, you know, whether it's a head dog, stifle dog, chest dog, you know, leg dog, whatever it is, you know, they have the capacity to, to deal with that situation and counter it. And a lot of times their way of countering it was fight rough or, or match style for style, be able to change up and take advantage of holes and take advantage of openings and and stay in a hole for long periods of time you know so i would say something like that within the, the red boy stuff how like i said however it's bred and you get one of those you know patch colored dogs with a lot of white or black and white or brindle and white you know and some of the 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 red boy dogs they do come out brindle even black, black brindle but it would be that particular style, you know, where kind of all around type of dog. Uh, Big Red's mother, I think it was her uncle, and I think the dog's name was Cowboy. He kind of, he was a red boy dog. He was red, uh, but he had kind of that style just all around. Good at, not great at one particular thing, but kind of good at everything. He had good mouth. He had strength. He had intelligence, you know, good air like that knew how to fight you know and uh that's what i would be looking for kind of in the throwback to the kobe stuff behind red boy you know if i saw an individual come out like that and like i said they they 
they pop up because you know if you want to put it this way everything just seems to come together right and you have that throwback stuff or you know we we're talking recently about you know the stomping auto dog you know i was on the twin show and it's been brought up in you know on my group and and i've been asked personally questions you know and those stomping auto dogs or arts missy dogs you know a lot of them come out with a lot of white with patches on them or red with patches on them or any particular color you know with patches they're patch dogs you know so uh you know you you look at guys who who have some of that in their background like that uh champion coast chiefs dog very well bred dog you know great dog according to uh reports that i got from him you know he's red and white a lot of red on him with some white patches right and he has some of that stomping auto arts missy so even though he's he has a lot of carver on both sides of his ped one side is towards that stomping auto arts missy stuff uh the other side is i forget what it was but but he's holding that pattern color pattern of that patched and you know white and with patches on them right that came out in him and i would guess that that uh because he was such a top individual that he had a lot of the style that those uh stomping auto dogs are known for or carver dogs basically are known for that's that's would be my guess i never saw him go but the reports you know uh that i heard about him he would just rough and and tough and and like that and uh following those dogs like champion bocephus or stabber or flint uh from the arts missy even uh champion diamond who was out of arts missy and monkey dog you know he was white with some uh like black spots you know they have in the white with patches on him too you know uh he was marked like that too so i'm guessing that's where it came from and today if you have that stuff if you would have that stuff in the background of your dogs you know the stomping auto arts missy or the monkey dog arts missy or even the the butcher boy crossed with the arts missy stuff you know the stomping auto arts missy stuff and you get a dog with that pattern and that build they were thick type of thick dogs some of them kind of short and squatty some of them with more leg on them uh but but durable rugged looking dogs you know if you look at a picture of uh let's say uh uh steinberg's diamond you know white with the black patches kind of short rough but rugged looking dogs like a lot of the white dogs were you know and that's where it kind of comes up you know maybe stomping those out of snow because a lot of white in there you know snow was almost a pure white dog if i remember correctly he was all white so uh you see those patterns coming out you know you see that with those that structure and those style coming out you know flint was a, a devastating dog you know stabber good reports on them jim bob dogs like that so uh it would it would be like that that, that that you get one of them patch dogs that come out with that structure and that style and like that it's th going back to stomping auto arts missy even though it's kind of in the background you know or you know you have a jeep dog you, you may have a jeep red boy in the background or jeep rascal in the background or tight bred jeep whether it's floyd or or uh you know uh gator or, or whatever jeep dog you want to talk about you know they have a particular structure you know full stop kind of a, a rectangular muzzle you know the big stifles you know kind of a deep chest with the roach back you know solid looking dogs now you may have that the jeep influence may be several generations back you may have let's say a quarter or eighth jeep in there or you know maybe you have a lot of jeep but it's crosses you might have the the jeep with the red boy you might have the jeep with the rascal all in the same pedigree you could have the Otis Honey Bunch stuff or Missy 
stuff with your Jeep stuff, you know, like the stone wall and, and that kind of stuff, right? And maybe you added something else, you know, and, uh, but uh, through your breedings, you know, you get an individual or more than one and they resemble Jeep, have that structure, have that style, have that build to them, that attitude, that intensity, that focus, you know, and it comes out may be a mirror image of Jeep himself or a mirror image of Honey Bunch if you have a lot of Honey Bunch in the background, you know, something like that. Uh, you know, for instance, like uh, with my dogs, after I got rid of them, my buddy took over and he he still got several years later, even though he added some different blood to it, you know, similar but different or Crosses is different. Like, for example, he had a, a Eli Red Boy Jocko male that he added to it, right? So there's different influences in the blood. But even several years later, some of his dogs would come out looking exactly like my old dogs from the past. Not just color, not just red and buckskin, but some of them had the, the bat ears and they have that... Uh, uh, you know, thick stifles and the roach back because of the Jeep influence. So, you know, yes, you can, you can get uh, almost a clone to something that was there way back in the pedigree, several generations back, you know, any more than eight, maybe at the most 10 generations, the influence of those dogs are not really, uh, not really prominent in in your your uh the dogs that you have at the present time although regardless of what you add and how you mix it up if you retain uh the traits in particular dogs and when you breed those dogs they can transfer those traits over to their offspring then no, you don't lose them. They keep going forward. They keep mo moving forward. Even though the dogs may look different or their color may change, the particular athleticism, temperament, behavior, work ethic, all these things, you can keep it going for a long time, even though the present day dogs may look different from a dog of the past. But as far as uh, uh, what you would call a clone of a particular dog, yeah. That can happen too. They can come out. You can have a bunch of black dogs and red dogs, and you get you get brindle this and that. And uh, if it's got the Stompanato Arch Missy back there, all of a sudden you get this patch dog. A lot of white on them with patches. You know, you can have the Jeep stuff way in the back and you know, different ways, and you got all these different influences, and then you get a buckskin dog, male or female. That looks just like Jeep or just like Honey Bunch. So that can always happen. I would, you know, if it does, I would, you know, it, it behooves you to have as much information, as much knowledge, as much experience of as many dogs that are in your pit as far back as you can go. So that, you know, you know, you might have pictures of those dogs of the past and you see your dog in the present day. He looks just like them, marked like them, same color, everything. But it's more than that. It's all the other traits involved too. So if you know the traits of those dogs way in the past. And you see it in your present day dog. Then I would say yeah. That, that, that's a clone of that dog. Or it's a, uh, it's a, a throwback to that, that particular dog. So you know. I hope this answers the questions. And, and you can get. Uh, you know another thing. You know a buddy of mine has. Uh, Heavily influenced, you know, Zebo and Lonzo stuff and Ozzy Steven stuff and like that. It would, what people would call a Zebo dog, even though it's more on Andy and Angie and like that. The dogs that are in Zebo's pedigree or like that, Mike and stuff like that. I'm not sure of the pedigree, but you look at his male and he not only looks and is built like Zebo, but he acts like that blood. And we're talking maybe, I don't know, eight, ten generations. You're talking from 
20 years ago, maybe, right? But this male looks like that. Got the short muzzle, got the stocky build, got the, the intensity, that insanity that, that when they get fired up, you know, uh, that, you, that you see and, you know, if you know the zebra dogs they're known for, that rough style. And he's a very game dog. So when uh, he was bred, he had individuals, uh, offspring, that looked like him. Not all of them, one here and there, almost clones, almost a mirror image, right? And it wasn't from breeding back to that Lonzo, Ozzy Stevens, Zebo stuff. They were crossed dogs. But because that influence is there, some of his offspring looked just like him and looked just like, you know, that blood, even though they're crossed. So, uh, you know, you see a picture of that particular male uh, when he was younger, and you see a picture of Zebo in his younger years. There's a lot of resemblance there. So it can, like I said, you can keep it going. And it can pop up, you know. You might have a lot of heavy bred Jeep dogs. And they have the Red Boy influence. And they have the Rascal influence. And they have the maybe Missy influence. Whatever it is. However you did it. Whether it's Tab or or Fanny Red Boy stuff. Or, you know, uh, uh, Champion Gator or Floyd. You know, whatever whatever it is. Right? And you may get. A clone to the red red nose of the red boy stuff right the dogs concentrated on jeep honey bunch otis honey bunch rascal honey bunch you know finley's bow honey bunch but because that red boy is in there and because most of the red boy back then was inbred 20 years later you may have a clone of a particular red boy dog and he may be built like the Red Boy dog. He could be red, red nose like Red Boy stuff is, you know. Even though you concentrated on the Jeep stuff, it's in there. It can come out, you know. And you could do that with the, that could happen with any particular bloodline that you have in your dogs. Uh, you know, uh, you name it, it could come out, you know. You could have had... Uh, you know the the red boy Jocko stuff, and whether you went you know the Grand Champion Rodney May Day or you added Buck you know the Macho Buck all that stuff whatever it is you know you could have a throwback to the red boy side or you could have a throwback to Jocko you could have a dog that looks just like Jocko and acts just like Jocko you know even though there's other crosses in there. And even though you start off with that particular cross, it could take after one side or the other. And you could have a clone of one of those dogs from way in the back. If you have Grand Champion Buck in there, you could have a clone of Buck coming out. Even though it's not tight bred Buck, it's in there. So it can come out. So that's where that, that, that thinking of, you know, throwback came from. Or a clone. Or whatever term you want to use for it. It's kind of like with most stuff. It's If it's in there, it can come out. You just have to know the history of your dogs as much as you can. So that when it does come out, you're not questioning. You know, why does the dog look like that? Well, it's in there. You know that the potential for it is can can come out looking like that and acting like that. But you have to know where it's coming from, you know. If you have uh, some buck influence in your Mayday stuff, but you concentrated on the Mayday side because buck is in there, uh, several years later, several generations later, you may have a clone of buck. And it's how you want to utilize that, you know. That may be the particular dog, when you breed him, use him in your breeding program, you have Buck's influence again, back to the front. So it's something to think about. It's a good topic. I hope I covered it. 
And uh, like always, thanks for your support, all your uh, subscriptions, hitting the like button, and any comments, feel free to post them. Thank you.